This sicha, in addition to being a sicha on the parsha, is also a siyam on Masech Tashvius. The Rebbe says, in regards to the mitzvah of Shemitah, there's a famous question. Is the mitzvah a mitzvah on the land that it should rest? Or is the mitzvah on the yid, on the owner, that he should rest from doing work in his land? A practical difference would be, if a guy is doing the work, if we say it's a mitzvah on the land, to rest, and the land did not rest, and the owner would have been over on this mitzvah, even though a guy did it for him. On the other hand, if it's a mitzvah for the person, the owner, to rest from work, so if a guy did it, bottom line is, the owner rested and he was not over on any mitzvahs asay. So too there's a question in regards to the fact that the fruits, the produce of the Shemitah year are hefker. A similar question. Is the owner the one that needs to make it hefker? Or is it in a way that the Torah just made it that it's automatically hefker? Hashem just says that these fruits are essentially hefker this year. One of the practical differences would be if a person clearly did not make it hefker, let's say he went and he actually locked his vineyard, even though he's of course not allowed, but then no one else could come and take his fruits, and if they do, it would be, it would be robbery, it would be stealing. The Rebbe says we could bring a proof that it is actually the obligation for the person himself, when we compare it to the deen of letting, goes of letting go of loans in the year of Shemitah. The Gemara learns out from a Pasuk that there's a certain comparison between letting go and canc- letting go of our land on Shemitah and letting go of our loans on Shemitah. And regards to Shemitah's Ksofim, letting go of loans, the Mishnah says in the end of Masech Shvi is the following. Hamachzir Choyv B'Shvi is if a person wants to return a loan from Shemitah, the lender should say, I am canceling, I'm letting go of the loan. If the borrower says, nevertheless, I want to pay you the debt, so he should accept it. And the it's learned out from the words of Zed Dvar Hashmita, which we understand and mean as meaning you had to say it. Dvar, you said that you're letting go of the loan, and that's enough. Says the Rebbe, if Shemitah of letting go of the loan would have been that Hashem automatically cancels it for you, what does it mean, you're giving back a debt? There is no debt. And what would it mean when the lender is saying, I am canceling it? You're not canceling anything, it doesn't belong to you. Furthermore, if the Torah was the one that canceled the debt, then perhaps it should even be usur for the borrower to try to do something opposite of giving it back. And yet we're saying, as the Mishnah goes on, Ruach HaChamim Noichamim, and the Chacham are actually happy with him. Which seems to tell us that it's not the Pshat, that the debt is just completely cancelled automatically and by itself. There's an obligation of the, of the person that he should let go of this loan. And furthermore, even when he lets go of the loan, it only means that he is not demanding it, but it's not as if the loan is just gone completely. And as the Pasek says, Lo yigois, you should not be demanding the loan. And therefore, because you're not demanding it, of course you're letting go of it, so the borrower now no longer owes you money. But that's only as far as the borrower and lender are concerned with themselves. In other words, the loiv is not chayiv, he doesn't have a shibud anymore to the malva. But there is still some sort of obligation left on the money itself or on the possessions itself of the loiv. In some sense, it's still connected to this loan. And therefore, on the one hand, yes, he's not obligated to pay, but we do call him when he pays machzer choivoy as if there was some sort of debt over there, and the chachamim will be happy with that. Now, as said before, the shemitah, the letting go of loans and of land, has the same gather. And therefore, by the field, there's also this concept that the person has a mitzvah to make his field hefker. The only difference will be that by the money, since the bottom line was the main point was just that he shouldn't demand the money. So therefore, even when he cancels the loan, we could still say, as we said before, that there's still some sort of shibud, something left on the money that is still in some way connected to the malva, and therefore, if it, it technically could go back and the chachamim will be happy. Whereas in land, the lashon of the Pasuk is v'ashvi is tishmiteno, you should let go of the land, unetashta, and abandon it. Clearly, the fruits are becoming essentially, absolutely hefker, by the person's action. Says the Rebbe, based on this idea, we can now go ahead and can explain the next part of the Mishnah in the end of Shavias. After discussing about a person giving back his loan, the Mishnah gives another two examples of people that the Chachamim are happy with. A person borrowed money from a geir, 
Now this Geir's children also, this, this person's children also became Geirim, but we know that according to Torah, they're not considered related now. So he borrowed money from this Geir, he does not have to pay it back to the children. But if he pays it back, the Chachamim are happy. Another din. We know with movable objects, there was an agreement between the buyer and the seller, an object will be sold. If the item was not taken, moved by the buyer, even if he paid money, so there was no transaction. However, the Mishnah says, Cholamakayim is Dvari, if the people still keep their deal, they're part of the deal, even if it was not moved, the Chachamim are going to be happy with this person. So now, when we say these two examples, they're not only following from the previous examples because there are more cases over here with which the people are, Chachamim are happy with people doing things that they're not obligated, but rather, it's going to be more with re, in regards to what the Chachamim are happy. In other words, the, the idea of what we're discussing is a very similar idea. It's not only that they're happy because of a side point the person kept as part of the deal, but also as far as the obligation of the object over here is concerned. In other words, just like by the case of the loan of Shemitah, there is no obligation between the people, between the borrower and the lender, but there is an obligation on the hefts on the object. And that's why we say on the one hand, it's not an obligation that he has to give it back, but the Chachamim will be happy. So too in these other two cases, someone borrowing from a gayer and a person keeping his word in movable objects, it's going to be in a similar type of thing as we will explain. And each one of the following cases are going to be adding something more to the previous case. And that is, when the person gives back his loan from Shemitah, the Chachamim are happy because of three good things that happened over here. Number one, as far as the Malva is concerned, the lender. He did a mitz- he, he's someone that did a mitzvah lent money. So the Chachamim are happy when the loan is being paid back because now he's not losing out money as a result of doing his mitzvah. As far as the loiv is concerned, the borrower, the Chachamim are happy that this man, although he wasn't obligated to pay back, he nevertheless has that good feeling to pay back to the person that did him a favor. And then there's the object itself, as we said before, the object itself, there is still some sort of shibud on this object or on the possessions of the loiv, and therefore the Chachamim are happy when this object was given back. Again, the whole chiyuv was between the borrower and the lender, there was no shibud, there was no obligation, but the object itself, the, the loan itself, was never completely essentially cancelled out, so the Chachamim are happy when it goes back. We move on to the next case, the person that borrowed from the geir. So here, it's in regards to the loan itself, but it's only two, two things that are going to benefit, so to speak. There's the loiva, the borrower, and there's the object. The loiva, the borrower, even though he was exempt from paying back, but again, since he took something in order to pay it back, so it's a mida toiva when he actually returns it. And then there's the object, which I said before, when a loan happens, there was some sort of shibud. Something happened over here in the, in the possessions that was never nullified. And therefore, when the, he gives it back, the chachamim will be happy. Whereas the third person in our case, the malva, which is the geir, well, he's no longer around, so we can't say that he benefited. And that's the chiddush of the second case, that even if only two benefited, so to speak, the Chachamim are again pleased and happy. And then we move on to the third case, the case of the movable object, and if a person fulfills his words, even though he wasn't obligated, the Chachamim are happy. Here again, it's not just a side point that a person fulfills his words, Chachamim are happy. Again, we're speaking about the object itself, the metaltal in itself, the movable object. But in this case, it's only going to be the object and not the buyer and the seller. Because on the one end, since... The object never moved, so as far as the dinim of acquisitions are concerned, there is no shibu, there is no connection yet between this buyer and the seller. And in fact, he's not even going to lose anything by not buying it right now, because he'll get his money back if he paid it. But as far as the object is concerned, something did happen over here because of this, the, 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 the agreement that it's going to be sold. So in some way, this object now moved in some way to the loyve. And therefore, there is some benefit when it's going to go back. And that's why the Chachamim are happy. So here the Chiddush is, even though it's only one out of the three that got the benefit, and the Chachamim, nevertheless, this extremely pleases the Chachamim. Now the Rebbe concludes the Sikha by saying the following. In Shemitah, we find two opposite things. On the one hand, Shemitah is more about a negative. It's about not working the land, canceling the loans, not demanding the loans, etc., etc., on the other hand, we say it all happens as a result of the person's dibur. He needs to say that he's making the fruits hefker. He needs to say that he's letting go of the loan. The explanation of this al is because the seventh year, 
corresponds to the seventh midah of Malchus, the sphere of Malchus. And in Malchus, we know there's two opposites. On the one hand, one hand Malchus is about the union of Bittul, nullified to all the previous spheres. On the other hand, Chassidus explains the idea of Malchus is primarily the union of Dibur of speech. And therefore, we have in the Dinim of Shemitah a similar idea. On the one hand, it's about not. It's about not working the land, canceling the loans, etc. But at the same time, there it all happens as a result of the Dibur. It says the Rebbe, by learning about these dinim of Shemitah, we should be zoiche immediately to be able to fulfill these mitzvahs in Eretz HaKodesh and be able to fulfill the Midoi Raisim and Atoira with the coming of Mashiach Tzedkeinu immediately.